Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and welcome back to another Galaxy vlog video. In the first video I was talking about my Proxmox cluster. I was giving you like a quick walkthrough exactly how everything is connected, what I'm self-hosting and etc. I leave a link to that video in the description below. A lot of things changed since that video. A lot of things reconfigured, uh, reconnected, replaced, uh, different services because self-hosted etc. I might do an update in some time in the future. This video is more focused on how I am cooling the things inside this box. During summer days, during some summer days, um, it's getting quite warm here in home office, so the uh, the devices inside this box will suffer. So I needed to do something. Right now, inside this box, it sits. Looking at this old-fashioned thermometer, it sits at 30 degrees, and it's been like that uh, without going up. Uh, and any more hotter, any, any more warmer inside. So what I am going to about to show you is working as it's keeping the stuff inside, not going above 35 or 40, especially 40 degrees Celsius as it used to. First thing what I did is I added one exhaust fan here at the top and one 120 mil Noctua fan. And that was working fine, but wasn't enough. I needed to add more. So what I did, I added one fan here on the right, which acts as an intake, and another fan on the left, which acts as intake. So then I have two fans that acts as intake and one as outtake. And Algo lasers, laser cutting engraver helped me to get this laser, laser cut this panel here. So in this video, I just want to take you on a journey to show you how I designed all this, why I designed all this, why it looks like that, what kind of things I done wrong, just to give you a bit of information if you're planning to do something like this with well, not just exactly the same box but something like this for your home home lab kind of thing first thing let's talk hardware and straight away you probably will notice it is a bit dark because i've been using this this device for for a while now anyway this is the algo laser alpha mk2 laser cutter and engraver sent to me by a company called algo lasers funny story uh almost the same day when i started to think how to get all this done, what I need to do, what I need to have to make this happen. They sent me an email asking if I would like to review their product. So I said yes, without a, without a basically any sh shadow of a doubt, because I, I knew this will help me to achieve my goal, achieve my project, or complete this project to get this running. I was, <laughs> first idea was to actually go and start 3D printing something, but then how I'm going to 3D print this? Because this panel is much bigger than the 3D printer bed. So my idea was maybe print in four pieces and then screw them together or something. But then I thought, no, I need to make this neater than just having the four pieces glued to each other. So back to Algo lasers. This is a 22 watt laser. It's a class 4 laser. So obviously the laser will shoot out of the laser head. So you need to have eye protection at all times when you're using this laser and the laser laser protection glasses was included inside the packaging and they really if i put those on as you can see everything turns green so these must be worn every time when you're using a laser so yeah class 4 laser shoots out of the laser head and it can go through a lot of materials that i'm using like a hot knife through butter obviously it can cut paper cardboard uh, thick wood wood sheets like this. This is a three mil uh, wood sheet, which is exactly the same one that I used here to make this happen. And it can go through um, acrylic glass like No Tomorrow. This is, I do believe, is a two millimeter, two and a half millimeter acrylic glass. And this is, by the way, the fan cover, the 50 mil fan cover, which was my first idea. What if the panels that was attached before take those panels and add the add a fan in there or add the four fans actually in there and just then obviously do the um the covers but that was not a great idea as the fans that i was using they were small they were noisy and it felt more like i i, I live and I, I mean i work inside the service rack than actually at just a home office so that was the uh, not not happening i'll go late alpha mk2 um laser cutter it has a working area from 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter and it's like I said it can cut through a lot of a lot of material I uh, mainly I was using the wood sheet like this just to play around 
and obviously the acrylic glass. Another thing to point out, even if it's right now set up in my home office, I do not use this device inside the house because when it cuts through even a paper, obviously the paper will be will get will burn because of the laser. It's not gonna get set on fire, but obviously that part where the laser cuts it will emit some smoke and it will emit some vapor. So breathing all that stuff is not good for you. So every time when I need to use this, I go to backyard outside just to use it. A bit of like a getting the fumes and everything out of here. They included the pump, which right now is connected to a connector here, but it's turned off. I can turn it on, it's gonna start making noises. And that pump blows air through a through a nozzle or through the through a location where the laser goes out, and just blows out the dust and makes the cutting and engraving quality much better. The algo lasers right now, as you can see, if the camera can pick it up, is get IP address because this laser cut and engraver is Wi-Fi connectivity or has a Wi-Fi connectivity. You can connect this uh, this laser cut and engraver to your home network. So for right now, connect via this app to this printer. Or to this printer to this laser cutter let's say yeah this is me let's go control and i can control this using my phone let me try to actually home this right now from my app so if i'm going to press a home icon it goes straight away the app is great for a couple of things if you want to do a quick test or something you can actually go and say okay i want to engrave i want to let's say what i want to do i want to go and draw something and this is by the way the picture the picture of my son drew so we got this one engraved on the on the wood i mainly use via the wire cable so this is usb type c cable which is connected to my pc and i'm using the program or software called lightburn to get all the stuff cut one thing about the lightburn is that lightburn is not created by algo lasers lightburn is a third party program created for laser cutter and engraving laser cutting and engraving devices when the algo laser sends you this device there is no software like kind of thing for your computer there is only the app so if you find with the app just do a little tinkering around that's fine if you want to go something more pro you need to use a software and software will be lightburn and lightburn at uh, you can use lightburn 30 days free trial and after that is starts from 58 pounds depending on how more functionality you want in that program one cool feature this laser cutter has is this thing down here. This is a lock unlock keyhole. And this is an amazing thing to have because my five-year-old son keeps tinkering with my tech. So just to go and grab the key and just say, no, make sure no one will be able to use this and be safe. Just you, I'm using the key in the wrong way like that. So you plug it in and lock it and that's it. And right now it's locked and you can't print. You can't, uh, sorry, not print. You can't. Um, use this device as it is locked so you'll not be able to uh, the, uh, run the commands because this is basically locked like a car engine as you can see device locked the device will shut down in five seconds so it said no one can use it unless they have a key so hardware is covered right now let's go and talk about how all this was designed the idea was for my fans is to make the fans the less noisier or use the fans that are less noisier and to uh, allow me to they basically push as much air as possible through the through the side of the of the um, detector box. First idea was to buy a grid of fans, two by two grid of fans, and just attach that to the side and just leave it. A lot of people mentioned that it's going to be noisy, so I decided to dish that and go to a most quiet ones um, I can get is Noctua, and I got three fans. Like I showed you, is two on either side and one at the top. So the idea was to use three fans and two push the air from the sides in and one takes out. So two intake, one outtake. And first, first thing that I laser cut using this uh, Algo Lasers laser cutter is this side panel for testing. The neighbor was throwing away his kitchen cabinets and I just took the back plate of the kitchen cabinets. I said, look, can I just take this because I'm going to laser cut my fan grill uh, covers. And it, his face was quite, quite a picture. But anyway, I got this one cut and this laser cutter went for this wood sheet, which is, I do believe, like I said, it is um, three millimeters or four millimeters uh, thickness. Let's double quickly check. Uh, and it is, yes, it is four millimeters. You can set the laser cutter, the laser strength to 100% and it will go, f go 
not, it will not go through entirely this. So the programs like a light burn allows you to set up passes. Passes basically means that how many times the, the path needs to be followed by a laser, and then you can set up how fast the laser can move and how, how strong the laser will be. So for example, to cut this, I use 25 passes to go around the same perimeter, same line, at 60% strength and at 60 millimeters per second. And it went through. At 25 probably is a bit too much. I think I was able to, I can do that with a 15 or 20 passes, but just wanted to make sure that it will definitely cut through. So this is a, let's say a version one. I added the fan in, it, it is a bit scuffed here on the side just because it was a, it was from a broken piece. And that did work. So one is created and then I went and done a second one. Uh, which was perfectly uh, looking and that's why this one is right now is connected there or is added the fan. On the other side I thought you know what once we're going to be acting as outtake on the right I need two fans on the left uh, closer to a wall to act as intake so I created this. This is um, basically the same size and everything obviously is created side by side. All the things I created um, been used in on shape. I use the on shape to create all these drawings then export to STL, from STL export into or import into a Tinkercad and from Tinkercad export as SVG. On shape not allowing you to export SVG and there is another bunch of files but I just decided not to mess around. I found or just I felt that exporting from one shape to Tinkercad or from Tinkercad straight into um, SVG file will be faster than just going messing around with the file names. So got that one um, cut um, just to fit two fans side by side. And because there is like a these holes I made the much wider and the bolts and screws was flicking or going through, I made this bracket which attached to the back. So you connect all this and it makes two fans connect. And that worked great, but then I thought, you know what, this is not ideal because it, it doesn't feel, feel like a, there is a lot of uh, air circulation inside the box. So I end up to have one fan on the left, one fan on the right, and one fan at the top. But before all that, before all these wooden sheets, I actually went and purchased the acrylic glass. This is great. This is a one millimeter acrylic glass. A couple of things I did wrong by using this or thinking that I will use this to get the fans mounted. This first is wobbly, but still uh, it will connect. But the this was a bit of rattling I would say um, when the air was going in and out. So I'm not sure the one millimeter is probably the worst thing that I, I picked. Uh, two or something, two or, or more millimeters thickness would be better. And second thing, this is a fingerprint magnet. When I peel the protective sheet off the, the, um, the acrylic glass, it looked amazing. It, it, was, it was like a mirror. In literally 10-15 seconds it was already covered by the, my fingerprints so that was not not a great thing to pick. If I will decide to replace those with something like a black acrylic glass I will definitely pick thickness of two millimeters or more just to make it more sturdy because this is really sturdy uh, like this one for example what's that is where is my caliper I found it so let me go and get that one out so this is Three. So three millimeters of acrylic glass. By the way, this was included inside the packaging with the laser cut and engraver. As they send a little like a welcome pack, a uh, couple of couple of materials as example. This size acrylic glass as example. As you can see, this is this is that. And it's cut and it's cut really really well. So laser cutter is again is an amazing um, amazing addition to my toolbox because. Not everything can be 3D printed and not everything can be laser cut or any shape like a, any shape. Yeah, but like one fills the other with every new item that I 3D print or create. I learn something new and when I learn something new, I can implement into my, like I said, my surroundings, help it around and just, just to, um, let's say, increase the quality of life. Thank you very much for watching till end of this video. I appreciate that you watched it. And thank you for Algo Lasers for sending me their laser cutting engraver. If you're looking to buy their laser cutting engraver Alpha MK2, please use the link in the description below and coupon code MK100 to get $100 off. And like always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.